It obviously goes without saying that Project 06 has been on my radar for quite some time now, and yes, I'm aware that Chaos X has plans on doing the bosses and the final story and maybe even the DLC levels as the next and possibly final release for this project. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Who's... I haven't gotten a single goddamn text all day and the literal second I start doing something, someone decides they want to fucking text me. If that ain't the truth... You know when you go to watch porn and as soon as you find a video and you're like, yep, let's do it, someone texts you immediately and you're like, oh, this is awkward, do I stop watching the porn and respond to this text or do I just keep doing what I'm doing? That's how I feel right now. Honestly, guys, I wasn't going to make a video about this game until that last demo dropped, but after playing the silver release, I got hella motivated to talk about it. I mean, if that demo doesn't come out until fucking, like, I don't know, 2025 or some shit, who knows if I'll feel the urge to even do this again. If you're a veteran to my channel, then you probably already know that I'm one of the internet's first 06 defenders from back in the day. <laughs> Not like that's exactly something to brag about, but I feel like it's important context to provide going into something like this. Look no further than a video from one of my good friends, Steven Nux, reacting to the Sonic South by Southwest stream back in 2016. This was a time of the internet where you'd be fucking crucified for talking positively about 06. Unlike today where people are finally starting to see the passion that got buried beneath all the bullshit and lack of polish that plagued the game. In 2006, <laughs> Where's Kyle? Kyle's November like the 16th, only one probably cheering right now. Oh my god, 06. Oh my goodness. Sonic Rivals! Sonic Rivals, that is so funny, dude. Fuck man, seven years ago? I cannot believe that it's been that long. If you absolute degenerates have somehow never watched his stuff before, click off this video and go watch them now. Anyway, I can very distinctly remember my first time playing Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. I somehow convinced my dad that this game was more important than my early childhood education, so he picked me up early from school for a fake doctor's appointment and we went to GameStop to buy it. And honestly, I had a blast playing it ever since day one. Yes, I remember being annoyed at all the common issues with the game, like the loading screens and the lack of jump control in the mock speed sections, the silver boss fight, pretty much all the characters sucking to play and all that bullshit. But as I continued playing it more and more and got better at the game, it started to become really fun to play. It's easy going back to Sonic 06 nowadays and appreciating all the things that it was trying to be. A true step forward for the franchise. Unlike the budget-ass titles that they pump out now, this one just felt different. It kind of felt like a game developed by actual competent human beings for a change. So much passion bundled up into one broken-ass, unfinished disaster of a game. What? I never said the original game was objectively good or anything. I actually believe the opposite. It's a fucking train wreck. I come from a time where you couldn't do anything but dream of what 06 could have been had it been finished. Proper physics that feel fast and fluid, abilities for all characters that are fun to learn and keep the game flowing at a fast pace once mastered, upgrades for the main trio that make the game even more fun. All this stuff just felt like a fever dream to the child version of me, and I swear to god guys, fantasizing about this was a totally normal and non-autistic thing to do. But thanks to Chaos X, we no longer have to imagine these things. They became a reality with Sonic P06. And don't worry, this isn't going to be one of those lame-ass videos where I talk about the same stuff as everyone else, like the history of the original 06 release, the reception, and how it affected the franchise forever until this very day. Or even one of those analysis videos where I go through every single little thing that PO6 changed or added. I mean, by the time this video is even done, there's probably already 5,000 different videos on this game that basically cover all the same shit anyway. I would have gotten... I would have gotten this... Oh my fucking god. I would have gotten this video done a lot sooner, but honestly I've been unable to put Tears of the Kingdom down in my free time, so that hasn't really helped getting this fucking video done. Anyway, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, Sonic. Boy, this game is special. I guess we can begin at the main menu, which has a bunch of neat new additions. First and foremost, there's a ton of fun little customizable features in the extras menu that weren't present in the retail game. My personal favorite being the jump dash type. Honestly, you guys, I have it written in my script to describe what exactly this does, but you all fucking know it already, so there's really no point, so I'm just gonna completely gloss over this. These kinds of customizable options really do go a long way, even if they are rather basic. There's been some other little quality improvements to the menu as well, like each character having a custom animation and a voice line when you select them. Let's get going! I'll show you my real power. Great! <laughs> I fucking forgot I even did that. I guess I really wanted to play the last story. Oh yeah, you can also have multiple save files now, which is pretty cool. I don't know why Sonic Team is so fucking scared of this basic feature in their games. When was the last time you could even do this? 
Without actually looking it up, I honestly want to say that it was fucking Sonic Heroes, which you could have 99 goddamn save files in. Okay, but seriously, that's a little overkill. Just give me like fucking five files or something. I don't know. I guess I won't go too much into the level design as that's all relatively been left unchanged with a few exceptions like this new hallway segment in White Acropolis connecting Sonic and Tails to make the game world just make a little bit more sense. Rather than just hitting the switch and then Sonic's randomly where he needs to be, it starts you off where you last left off with him and you go through this new section to connect him with Tails. It's little details like this that just help enhance the fun of these levels even more. I can't help but compare them to the Sonic 3 zone transitions. Yes, it could just cut to black and start you wherever you need to go next, but isn't it so much better to see an actual transition to see how you got there? Maybe I'm reaching here, but that little addition really does go a long way into making the world feel more fleshed out. The level design in 06 to me was always really fun to play. I mean, if you look back on my top 10 Sonic fav- Sonic favorite videos. Sonic favorite videos, everyone. Yep, new video coming next week. I mean, if you guys look back at my top 10 favorite Sonic levels video- Oh my god, why can't I fucking say this line? This is why I don't do scripts, bro. I mean, if you guys look back on my top 10 favorite Sonic levels video, number one was Kingdom Valley, which still remains true to this very day. It just always felt so right, especially once you master the gameplay and memorize the levels, they can start to become a breeze to play through. Flying through them as fast as possible with as much style as you can is really fun, though in Project 06 my favorite thing to do when replaying the levels isn't even to beat my fastest time, but actually is my total score. You see, P06 completely overhauled the score system from Retail 06, taking lots of inspiration from SA2 and how that game handled the point system. When you chain together a shit ton of enemy kills, either without touching the ground or losing your momentum with how fast you take them out, you can rack up some serious bonus points. With Sonic, you can just keep using the bounce attack to chain together attacks, which is pretty fun. Or Silver by using his superpower, which you can unlock, which is essentially a big psychic blast that takes out all enemies that are around you. But the absolute best has to be the newly upgraded Shadow and all his chaos abilities. I guess I'll just talk about all the characters and shit now. Sonic controls so fucking well it's unreal, like he actually has momentum when moving down slopes and hills, it's insane. And everyone seems to be having a blast with it. Wow, something that's core to Sonic's character being well executed and extremely fun to play. Who could have predicted that? Seriously though, all the characters play so incredibly well. I'd even go as far as to say this is probably the best how some of these characters controlled in the entire franchise, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks that. Sonic does his homing attacks faster now and has his missing dismount animations coded back in so he doesn't just do the same default backflip which is nice. His gems actually fucking work and the meter goes down when using them. Though I will say, part of the countless hours of fun I had playing Sonic 06 growing up was just me fucking around in the levels in the hub world with Sonic's broken ass gems, so I'll always cherish those memories. But now we see how they were actually intended to work. Some of them actually do work now too, like the white gem doing more damage to enemies with health bars, and the green gem just not sucking ass in general and having a decent hitbox. Though I'm still not exactly sure what the point of the red gem is. I mean, yeah, you can slow down time, but what's the point exactly? In the original 06, it slowed down time and the level timer while maintaining Sonic's normal speed, so it was useful to break speedruns and shit, but here it's nothing more than a slow motion option. Sonic can also now control his jump direction in the mock speed sections. I will say that getting good at the game definitely does help, but I won't sit here and justify that that was a valid reason to restrict control in those sections. I'll link an old video of mine in the comments or something of me playing all the mock speed sections from Sonic 06, and you can kind of see what I mean when I say that learning the controls and level design helps make those sections really fun to play, but again, I'm not saying that that's an excuse. I have no idea where to mention this that'll make sense, so I'm just gonna throw it in right here, but something that I always loved about Sonic 06 was when characters would hit springs or dash pads and fly through the air, they'd always do a couple flips and then start descending with their feet pointed down so the landing just made more sense realistically, and it always just seemed to flow together nicely. That was already in the original game, but I don't recall ever seeing anybody really mention this minuscule little detail, so it's just something that I've always appreciated. Anyway, getting back to Sonic's moveset, he also has a spammable spin dash again like in Adventure 1. And do I even need to go into why this is the best way to handle a spin dash in 3D? My god, using it to make high jumps off slopes is so much fun. It really does open up the levels a lot. If they designed these already well-designed levels with this mechanic in mind, I can only imagine the kind of skips they'd be able to come up with. When even was the last time Sonic had a spin dash? Fucking Lost World, I guess? And that barely counts because it was capped at one speed and lasted forever whether going uphill or not, so it was basically just a shitty boost. But here it's got momentum and controls perfectly. Arguably the best 3D spin dash in the entire franchise, which is kind of pathetic on Sonic Team's end. Let's see, who else? Oh my god, fucking Amy, dude? She sucked ass in the original 06, everybody knows that. 
but here she has some of her SA1 abilities, an increased speed cap, a faster and higher jump, and double jump that doesn't completely kill your momentum, allowing you to make way farther jumps than before. It's fucking crazy, bro. She is so much fun to play. They did remove her ability to go invisible as far as I'm aware, but honestly, that will not be missed. It was really only useful in 06 to avoid combat since Amy sucked to play as, but seeing as that's not the case anymore, there's really no need for it. Unless there was a stealth section to go through or something. Come to mention it, that actually sounds like it'd be kinda fun. Like maybe in a perfect world where this game goes above and beyond what their current intent behind the project is, and they added a custom stealth mission for Amy to go through at that point in the story when she busts Elise out of prison or something? I don't know. I know that goes beyond the scope of what they're trying to do, but doesn't that shit sound cool? Anyway, another change to all the characters that's present in everyone besides Omega is you can actually fucking jump into enemies to damage them again. I don't know if this was just cut from 06 or never intended to be in in the first place, but who in the fuck thought that that was a good idea? Killing enemies by bouncing on them has been in every single game up until this point, so who the fuck thought this change was necessary? Chaining together bounces and reaching higher ground is so much fun and it's such a simple feature to be present in the game. And yeah, I did say everyone besides Omega, and that's because Silver has an upgrade that allows him to curl into a ball just like everyone else. I'm not gonna lie, I was so used to Retail 06 that this feature kinda freaked me out a little bit. You guys have no idea how many hours I sunk into the original 06 growing up, so Silver just doing his base jump was embedded into the fucking depths of my brain. So when I unlocked this upgrade and I kept seeing him curl into a ball, it felt like I was stuck in some fucked up alternate reality or something. Some of the other things I adjusted to rather quickly, like Shadow no longer having that weird ass long homing attack or replacing his shitty kick to the spin dash. And speaking of him, Shadow is by far the best character to play as. The change in gameplay for him doesn't even compare to everybody else. As I just mentioned before, he finally has a spin dash again. On top of that, his chaos abilities were totally overhauled as well. Like I said, I'm not going to go into detail and regurgitate information that you already know, because I know you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Pulling off these insane combos as Shadow without ever touching the ground and seeing that big rainbow perfect pop up in the corner is so fucking fun, it seriously never gets old. Just look at this section of flame core. God, that shit is beautiful. We all know these moves kinda sucked in the original game, especially that fucking horrendous excuse of a Chaos Blast, but here they all work flawlessly. And just like Silver with his psychic explosion thing and Sonic being able to turn super, Shadow has an ultimate upgrade as well in the form of his inhibitor rings being able to come off mid-level for a huge power boost. It's not exactly a super form, but honestly it might as well be. You're invincible to all enemy attacks and you can take out any enemy in one shot. What makes this payoff in power so heavy on risk, reward, and fun to use is the fact that it drains the meter hella fast and when it runs out he'll stop dead in his tracks for a few seconds to catch his breath, slowing down your run and leaving you vulnerable in the process. It's such a fun thing to play around with when you're trying to make it to the goal ring before it runs out or something. It's honestly little self-set challenges like this that make the game so much fun to replay. Like let's see if I can make it to the end of the level without running out of power by moving fast enough and taking out enough enemies. Uh, speaking of that, that reminds me that I actually wanted to talk about rail grinding as a whole. Is it me or has rail grinding in Sonic games gotten really fucking boring as the titles went on? SA2 did it nearly perfectly as its introductory game besides the switching mechanic which wasn't totally trustworthy, but otherwise it was always really fun to go as fast as you can on the grind rail since it didn't have a max speed cap or chain links together using Sonic's bounce bracelet or some shit. With every game after that it just got more and more automated and now it's nothing more than a boring, lifeless chore. I mean, PO6 fixed it a little bit by adding the rail switching feature, and I think it's a little faster here than it was before, but it's still nothing like SA2's with the whole balance mechanic and fluctuating speed you can go depending on your skill level. Although there are a few times where you can bounce a Sonic onto rails, which feels pretty good, I guess. It makes sections like this one in Shadow's Crisis City really fucking painful to play on repeat playthroughs, especially when you have your chaos shit going and you lose a ton of time on it because it takes so long to get through this little section that exists for no reason other than just, wow, look how cool the thing is. I know it's not Chaos X's fault or anything, as it was just part of the level to begin with, I just wish there was a way to make this section more engaging. I mean, you literally just sit there and watch it play itself for like, what, 20 seconds or something? Not exactly the most stellar moment of gameplay for me. Shadow's vehicles are still present in the game, and honestly, they're still kinda shit. The buggy even got straight up doinked out of existence from the first part of Crisis City, since it's much faster to just run down normally, not to mention just more fun overall. 
The bike controls a little bit better, as does the glider, but that's not really saying much. I mean, is a 4 out of 10 good because it's better than a 2? Not exactly. I'm pretty sure this section off to the left is brand new to PO6, which is a nice addition. Kind of like what I said earlier about making the game world just make more sense, the original 06 locked this section off and forced you in one direction through the cave, which really didn't make any sense. Why not give the player choice in where to go? Like, let me make my own decisions on where to go and see what section is faster and more fun to go through. I'm a fucking adult man playing a Sonic game. Clearly I can handle this kind of responsibility. As I was saying, the rest of the characters are a lot better now too. Omega's pretty fun to play. He got his basic attack from Sonic Heroes implemented, which is nice, and he can do this cool first-person mode as well. It makes clearing enemies from a distance a complete breeze. Though when it comes to his basic claw attack, it would be cool if in the next update they tweak it just slightly more and maybe give him a beam or something to shoot when he spins around to extend his hitbox a little like in Sonic Heroes. Let's see, I already talked about Amy. Tails is pretty cool too. I mean, all he really needed was a speed increase like everyone else and a different way to attack, so slapping SA1's rhythm badge on him was really all he needed. Knuckles and Rouge are nice, playing similarly to how they did in SA2 with how you can attack enemies and they don't get stuck on fucking walls anymore, which is good. They also have the Drill Claw again to descend faster, which makes traversal a lot more fun. Blaze was always the most fun side character to play in 06, so I was especially interested to see how she'd handle in this demo, and as expected, she's even better here than she was there. Similar to Shadow, chaining together attacks as her is just as satisfying to pull off. I mean, look how fucking fast you can home in on enemies and take them out. It is so much fun, dude. Her moveset is very speed-oriented, so linking attacks together super fast and keeping the action going at the same time is such a rewarding combination. Silver, I was cautiously optimistic about. I didn't love or hate him in 06, he was just kind of... fine. As I said before, letting him curl into a ball was life-altering, so that's already a huge plus to playing as him here. But on top of that, he got a bunch of other new ways to attack enemies as well. His little bitch slap attack still kinda sucks, but I guess it's a tiny bit better. But the really fun ones come as those upgrades you can find in the levels. I can't be bothered to google the actual proper names for them, but the psychic slash thing is so much fun. Charging a beam up and releasing it to kill a bunch of enemies standing in a line is so good, dude. I feel like having to rely only on the objects and the levels constantly as the only way to take out enemies kinda sucked and it didn't really take advantage of Silver's whole psychic power thing he had going for him. I mean, come on, homie has psychic abilities and all they could come up with was throwing objects? Such huge missed potential to make him actually enjoyable to play, which I'm really glad that that concept was taken advantage of here. These additions on top of his speed increase from that totally fucking embarrassing speed he ran in the original game makes replaying his levels actually kinda enticing. That's really it in terms of control and abilities. I'm sure there's things I either forgot to mention or don't even know about, but I think I kinda covered what I needed to get off my chest. Now we can talk about the presentation and visual changes to the game, which there is a lot of. The most obvious thing to mention is how there's no slowdown in the game anymore. Whenever a bunch of shit would be going on on screen in the original game, it would come to a screeching halt and basically turn into slow motion, but that's not an issue anymore. That's honestly really the only technical side of things that I can really think of to mention. I mean, yeah, the loading screen issues are fixed, obviously, but that goes without saying. Everything else is purely just aesthetic, which breathes so much life into the game. Comparing the skybox of Flame Core side by side to the original is like night and day. It looks so fucking gorgeous. I just want to get high as fuck here, stare at the sky, and talk about life or something. Another really neat addition to the game are these intro cutscenes that play before certain levels. They're animated so well and I love seeing them play out, although I do wish there was an option to skip them. Like yes, I love them and all that, but sometimes I just want to keep playing the game. And yes, I'm aware that there's an option to turn them off in the main menu, but that means if I'm ever in the mood to watch them again, I need to go back into the settings to turn them back on. Jeez, these are fucking first world problems if I've ever heard them. Maybe in the next update we could get an option to leave them on but press the start button to skip them or something. I think that would be a nice change. Oh yeah, here's something you might not know. Chaos Zero is actually present in Shadow's Kingdom Valley. When you're going through the tunnel of his hovercraft, if you stop right here and look into the side tunnel, you'll see him standing there. Menacingly. Such a neat and totally unnecessary detail to include, but I fucking love it. The end section of Silver's Flame Core was completely updated as well. Not only can you go through this whole section a lot faster now thanks to his revamped abilities, but when you destroy the power source or whatever the fuck this thing is, a brief cutscene plays showing it blow up that looks so cool. And the end section right behind the goal ring was updated too with this cool glowing red atmosphere and heatwave effects. You can literally feel the heat through the visual design, it looks so good. There's a similar thing with the end of Shadow's Dusty Desert where you can see Mephiles' power flooding through the doors. 
I am so excited to see what he does with the boss fights in the next demo if this much attention to detail and care is going into things like fucking doors at the end of the level. I can only imagine what will be done to the bosses to make them feel more cinematic on top of actually playing and controlling well. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Another nice addition to the consistency of realism in helping with the levels not only feel different but keeping consistent with specific story elements are the changes in lighting to certain levels. Like Silver's Crisis City taking place at nighttime to be consistent with his opening cutscene and Blaze's solo wave ocean taking place at what looks like dusk. Shadow and Silver's aquatic base also has this cool black and white filter over it since this level for them is technically taking place in the past. Just another great example of Chaos X adding incredible visual changes to the game that we didn't even know that we needed. Well, I think I've officially run out of interesting things to talk about in regard to this project. Like I said, I'm not trying to do some super in-depth game analysis video that you've all seen a hundred times already. I just felt like I owed it to document my thoughts and experience with a game that's this special. From someone who constantly praised the original game despite the horrid state it was released in, it just kind of makes sense that I talk about it this one. Wait. It just kind of makes sense that I talk about this one, right? It's basically all I've ever wanted. I mean, it's literally brought me out of retirement and recharged my will to talk about Sonic on the internet again. I feel like that speaks numbers. I cannot wait for the next demo, and I'm certainly hoping that it won't be the last. If it is, I'd be more than satisfied with that, as even now my expectations have already been exceeded in terms of how far this project would go. But at the rate it's getting improved, I'd love to see the DLC levels added, the hub worlds, and even the shitty side missions. Fuck it, just recreate the whole goddamn game at this point, cutscenes and all. If that happens, I'll do a 100% completion series on this channel for it, mark my words. I'd be really interested in seeing how they go about making the hub worlds not suck. We all already know how lifeless and empty they were, specifically the Soliana Forest. Like maybe they'd add, oh, I don't know, fucking trees to the forest hub of the game to make it actually feel like a forest? I know, what an insane concept to try and comprehend. My smooth little brain is oozing from the idea. I'm being so deadass serious when I say that this is one of the best Sonic games I've ever played in my entire fucking life. It's basically the epitome of what a 3D Sonic game should be. If I'm ever gonna get interested in this series again, a game like this is gonna have to drop because god damn, in the time I've been away I don't think I've played, talked about, or even thought about Sonic as much as I have recently with the release of this demo. I literally can't thank this team enough for what they've done toward the preservation and reputation of 06. I don't know how to articulate this exactly, but if any of you have ever played a 3D Sonic fan game before, then you know that it feels like a fan game. P06 is the only exception, aside from maybe Sonic Utopia. This game just straight up feels like Sonic 06, but better. Rarely do I ever encounter something that makes me go, oh yeah, this is just a free 3D Sonic fan game that I downloaded from the internet. Like, if I took someone who doesn't know anything about Sonic or Sonic 06 and I told them to play this game, they'd probably just think it was an official release of a game from some alternate version of Sega and Sonic Team that actually cares and makes fun games loaded with tons of neat extras and things to make it replayable. This video doesn't even come close to the experience of playing this game for yourselves, so if you haven't tried it out yet, then why the fuck did you watch this video in the first place? And if you do somehow fit that uncultured demographic, then please familiarize yourselves with the link in the description to go download this for yourselves. Okay, goodbye.